Thank you very much. Kathleen, can we get a roll call? Commissioner Blanco? Here. Commissioner Hernandez is out. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Commissioner Seifert? Here. Chair Dickerson? Here. Um, next on the agenda is the approval of Planning Commission minutes of February 16th. Have all the commissioners had a chance to read those uh, minutes? And does anyone have any comments about them? And if not, we need a motion. I move that we approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes from February 16th, 2022. Do we have a second? I second it. Okay. Kathleen? Or, I, I guess since we're in, do we need, can we just do a, a blanket, mo I mean, can we do just a, do we need to have a roll call any longer? For minutes, um, I don't think we you'd work. Yeah, I don't think you're required to do a roll call for okay. minutes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Sorry, trying to kind of get back into the feel of being in. Um, let's see. Uh, did you have a statement you wish to make at this time? Yes, thank you, um, you Chair it. Dickerson and Commissioners. This is Dana Eady, the Planning Manager. Um, so prior to uh, moving on to the public comment item on the agenda, um, if you are on Zoom, and you wish to comment on an agenda item, please use the raised hand icon on Zoom. And once you are recognized, you will then be unmuted and allowed to comment on the business at hand in the order received. And the maximum comment time is three minutes or as other, otherwise directed by the chair. If you are calling in and you wish to be acknowledged, please raise your hand by dialing star nine and identify yourself when unmuted. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to public comment period. Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. Do we have anybody who would like to discuss things not on the agenda? Either here or in Zoom land. Nothing? Dana? Okay. Then we will move on to the public hearings. And we will start off with number one, which is my understanding is going to be continued. But Heather, you... You want to cover that? Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I'm going to have to recuse myself from this item as I have a uh, financial conflict of interest in that the uh, truck center is a source of income to my family. Thank you very much. Um, so do we have a, um, I understand we're continuing this, Dana? Yes. Thank you, Chair Dickerson and Commissioners. So we did receive um, a notification from the applicant that he was not able to um, attend the meeting tonight and so uh, we have prepared a memo that is requesting your commission to continue this item to the April 6, 2022 Planning Commission hearing. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then we will move on to item number two. A continued item, Sunset Recycling Center Plan Development Permit and Conditional Use Permit at 1465 yeah. We do need a motion. Oh, we need a, a motion for the continuation? Yes. All right, that's Thank fine. Uh, we need a motion for the continuation. Uh, yes, I would move that uh, conditional use permit U2021-0016 be continued to April 6 hearing. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> as well as I did. <laughs> um, continued items. Sunset Recycling Center Plan Development Permit and Conditional Use Permit at 1465 uh, South Broadway. Can we hear from staff? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chair Dickerson. Good evening. My name is Cody Graybell. I'm an associate planner with the city. And tonight I'll be presenting the continued item, Sunset Recycling proposing to establish a buyback recycling facility at 1465 South Broadway. And this item has been continued from the February 16th hearing to tonight with direction from the Planning Commission for staff to return with findings to deny the project. So this project was presented in detail at the last hearing in February. So for a quick recap, the project's in the center of the city and it's generally between West Stoll Road and West Enos Drive to the north and south, and between South Broadway 
and South Depot Street to the east and west. And this area has been developed with a mix of commercial and residential development. And the site is in the existing Santa Maria Shopping Center. And it is at the southern end of the center near the Foods Co. grocery store um, within that parking lot. So the facility includes two different components. There's a customer kiosk as well as roll-off metal storage containers. And each of the containers um, would be 8 feet by 21 feet. And the total facility size is 493 square feet. And approximately eight parking spaces would be utilized for this operation. So just a little background on the prior hearings. Um, this was agendized three times prior to tonight. So on October 6th, staff presented the project with a recommendation for approval. And the commissioners mentioned a handful of comments and concerns about the project. And um, they include traffic congestion that could be generated at the Southerly Broadway driveway, the general inconsistency with the character of the shopping center, and the potential impact upon neighboring properties from the unsightly, unscreened metal containers. And then at the second hearing on December 15th, prior to the meeting, the applicant requested a continuance to have more time to further evaluate alternative options. And then at the February 16th hearing, staff presented a revised concept to the commission with a recommendation of approval and the commissioners reviewed the revised design and affirmed their concerns from the October 6th hearing and requested that staff return with findings and a resolution of denial for the project. So staff has provided a resolution with findings to deny the project and it's included in the staff report. And the findings are based upon the project's potential to impede vehicular circulation, create traffic congestion, and create a negative aesthetic along the South Broadway commercial corridor. So in conclusion, staff recommends the Planning Commission by resolution deny plan development permit PD 2021-0009 and conditional use permit U 2021-0005. Thank you, staff and the applicant are now available for questions. Thank you, Cody. Uh, before we get into questions, uh, disclosure by any uh, commissioners on um, ex parte communication with the applicant? No, I haven't either. All right. So we will move on to um, the. Uh, well, first of all, does, does the um, commission have any questions of staff at this time regarding this? No. Okay. Um, does the applicant have a presentation, Cody, or? Um. Chair Dickerson and, and commissioners, the applicant does not have a presentation. They did um, submit a, a letter, which I believe your, your commission has a copy of. Right. Um, and I'm trying to look on Zoom. I'm not sure if they're here on Zoom, but um, if they are, they could uh, raise their hand. Okay. Um, let me know. Oh, if I do see a hand raised. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and open. Let's and go ahead and listen. Uh, yeah, hear from them. Okay, you should be able to speak now. Good evening, City of Santa Maria Planning Commission. I am the applicant, Artashis Balion. As the owner-operator of Sunset Recycling, I request a reconsideration of previous decision on denying my project. We have come a very long way and walked in every way possible with each request that was made by Planning Commission. Facility was respectfully flipped and readjusted upon request at the first public hearing. And we have moved recycling center four parking stalls down to avoid any traffic circulation related issues. In addition, we never impede on drive aisles or traffic, which safety being our highest priority, we operate in our lanes only and control our area and keep it as safe as possible. Currently, there are no recycling opportunities for patrons in the city of Santa Maria, which forces residents to litter on the public streets or trash them, which in turn ends up in our landfill, ocean, and slowly deteriorates and destroys our planet. Not only does it destroy our planet, the new life of the bottle, or for new construction, it could have been used for, goes to waste. Patrons are also driving long distances to find places to recycle, which should not be the case. That only directs them to other cities and they receive the business instead of the city of Santa Maria. Per Cal Recycle, 
state of California, each jurisdiction needs easily accessible recycling opportunities. Santa Maria is extremely underserved and is required by state mandate to offer these services or else supermarkets and beverage dealers have to pay hefty fines every month to the state of California. Furthermore, after reading John's opposition against my operation, I noticed that he is not even in the same shopping center, and he does not know best or better than me. As I am the actual operator and know how to run my operations or where my operation should be located. In addition, my operations will not be of a detriment to him or his shopping center. This facility will actually benefit his many tenants as well, because he does have markets and beverage dealers at his center. I would like to mention we are not causing any adverse effects to other tenants, businesses, neither are we a public nuisance, which in turn needs to be looked at. We also don't have any objections or opposition from anyone inside of our shopping center, which proves that the shopping center will also further benefit from the recycling center. Because the cash they receive from recycling, they will use inside the many different stores at the center. This recycling center will also alleviate about 10 stores in total to becoming compliant with state of California mandate of recycling requirement for beverage dealers and grocers. The recycling center will only affect the many different retailers positively because we are centrally located and in close proximity of other grocers and beverage dealers. Since planning department was forced to include and provide resolution of denial, which was once a resolution of approval, I am seeing many negative non-existent adverse effects verbiage that is being added onto my project that does not make any sense. However, I would like to remind city staff that I once met and still meet all developmental code requirements for Santa Maria's municipal code. I understand the need and feel that we need to choose a better location, but there is never really a perfect location for any type of operation. I can promise one thing, that as the owner-operator of Sunset Recycling, with over 30 years of experience in this industry, we operate in high regards from city and state officials. I will make sure I do as promised and deliver everything I mention. I have come to prove with my extensive knowledge throughout California that our selected locations work best. Considering the fact that I have statistical proof of set operations and experience, I would at no time propose something that I know I cannot commit to or deliver. This is not an at-risk type of operation. This is the type of business the world needs more of to sustain our current life for the next generations to come. We have to always remember to reduce, reuse, and recycle. It is very important to understand that we operate very similarly and in much more heavily congested and busier centers. The location we are proposing now is always empty and away from everything. We have never had any issues with current operations that we have been approved for at many of our other locations in California. All I am asking for is an opportunity and to believe in me that this location is in fact a much better location to operate. We will happily serve your community and satisfy conditions of approval and finally provide a recycling service for your residents that everyone in the city of Santa Maria has been desperately waiting for. Thank you, Senator Artasha Salian, President of Sunset Recycling. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, are there any questions of the applicant by commissioners at this time? No. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and open the meeting to the public. Is there any written communication from the public on this matter? No, that was submitted. Okay, and how about any uh, Zoom people? Um, if you're on Zoom and you would like to make a comment on this item, item number two, please raise your hand. Do you have one hand raised? Okay, let's go ahead and hear from them. Okay. Uh, Anthony Ventura. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. My name is Anthony Ventura. I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. I live in the local area, and I believe that I'll be impacted by the environmental impacts of this project. The, the city should require the project to be built utilizing a local and skilled and trained workforce if it is to proceed. Other cities have not hesitated to apply a skilled and trained workforce, excuse me, requirements for private development projects in their city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair Dickerson, uh, I believe that um, Mr. Ventura may have been commenting on the third item, the seaside packaging. I, more than likely. Item, yeah. so just wanted to note that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, hearing no other, um, no other of the public who wants to hear any, we will bring it back to the commission, uh, public hearing to be closed, and uh, any further discussions 
from the commissioners on this. And if not, we are going to need uh, um, motion for resolutions or for a resolution. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the continued item Sunset Recycling Center Plan Development Permit and Conditional Use Permit at 1465 South Broadway, PD 2021-009, uh, be denied per the conditions written in this uh, staff report. Thank you very much. Do I have here a second? I'll second that. Okay. Kathleen? May I just clarify yes. the motion? So that's to adopt the, the resolution of denial? denial? Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen? Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? No. Chair Dickerson? Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, item number three, Seaside Packaging Warehouse Conditional Use Permit at uh, the 1300 block of La Brea Avenue. Can okay, from staff? Uh, yeah. thank you, Chair Dickerson. One moment, let me just pull up the presentation. Mr. Chairman? Yes. The, those, the, all the denials can be uh, appeal to the city council, correct? That's correct. Okay. I believe so. Is that correct, Heather? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So the next item that I will be presenting is the Seaside Packaging Warehouse Conditional Use Permit at the 1300 block of La Brea Avenue. And this item was presented to the Planning Commission at the February 3rd study session. So this project's in the southwestern portion of the city, and it's between West Stoll Road and La Brea Avenue to the north and south, and South Blosser Road and A Street to the east and west. And the development's been characterized as industrial and residential primarily. There is industrial development to the north and to the east, including the Central Coast Truck Center, Lineage Logistics and Titan, which are both cooling facilities, and the Old Dominion trucking facility next door. And then to the west of the project site is a drainage basin used for flood control. And to the south is the Heritage at Westgate Ranch single family residential subdivision. So the zoning at the site is M2, or general manufacturing. And the district permits similar storage uses, such as many warehouses and greenhouses. And the project site is surrounded by a mix of industrial, residential, and commercial zoning. So the project site is 6.18 acres in size, and it's currently vacant and flat, and it doesn't contain any significant features like trees or bodies of water. So this is looking onto the project site from La Brea Avenue, if you are facing north, and currently the site just contains um, seasonally mowed grasses. So the project operates by receiving daily deliveries of pre-made farm product packaging boxes from freight trucks, and then farm trucks periodically arriving at the site daily to load the boxes and leave the site uh, the project's been designed so no trucks would have to idle on site and no agricultural produce would be stored on site. The freight deliveries would be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and farm trucks would arrive from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. and there would be approximately 10 truck trips per day that would occur. So for this item, staff did complete environmental review as required by the California Environmental Quality Act. And part of that review included a traffic study um, the applicant provided, and it determined that the street network could currently handle um, the existing flows plus the project and still maintain an acceptable level of service, and that um, the additional traffic wouldn't create unacceptable service levels. And additionally, staff has added a condition of approval that prohibits truck idling on the Brea Avenue, and idling on site is limited to five minutes unless the project and the, the trucks, excuse me, um, meet certain low emission standards. And regarding the environmental review during the public comment period, we did receive 
comments from three different um, agencies. So the first was the Santa Barbara County Air Pollution Control District, and the next was the California Department of Conservation Geological Energy Management Division, known as CalGEM. And then we also received a comment letter by an attorney firm representing a carpenter's, re carpenter's union, excuse me. And for each of those um, comments, staff did review them and we determined that they were minor and we've adequately responded to them in the staff report and the environmental document that's included. The site plan um, proposes a warehouse and distribution facility that's 40,854 square feet and it would be located on the eastern half of the project site. The building is set back 43 feet from La Brea Avenue and there's 243 feet of concrete paving that's provided next to the warehouse that's reserved for loading for the trucks. There are 46 parking spaces proposed and 39 parking spaces are required and the facility would be enclosed with a rolling gate and a wrought iron fence along the project frontage. And then there would be a chain link fence with slats on the sides of the project site. So most of the floor plan is reserved for warehouse and that's shown in the light blue on the, the floor plan here. And the area in yellow represents the office space that's proposed. And it includes both first and second floor area for the office. And the design for the office is a mezzanine with the second floor open to below. And the building itself would be 37 feet tall and it's proposed to be consistent and compatible with the existing industrial development along the northern half of La Brea Avenue and the design features include galvanized aluminum siding, a blue metal roof with trim and matching blue metal canopies and roll-up doors and the applicant has added additional articulation along the elevation facing the project frontage which is this south elevation and a step down roof, which helps add some architectural interest along the frontage. And then here, this is just a rendering of um, what the project would look like from the frontage. It provides a little more detail of some of the articulation provided. And landscaping is proposed site-wide and a total of 17% of the site would be landscaped and 15% is required, and then 19 trees are proposed throughout the site, and there are three different species, including strawberry trees, olive trees, and a London plane tree. So in conclusion, staff recommends that the Planning Commission take the following actions. By resolution, adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring report, and then by motion, approve conditional use permit U2021-0002. Thank you. Staff and the applicant are available for questions. Thank you very much, Cody. Thank you very much, Cody. Um, before we uh, go into questions, um, disclosures by any commissioners on ex parte communication with the applicant? No? no. Okay, none from me either. So um, any questions of staff at this time regarding this project? No? No? All right. Uh, can we hear from the applicant then? Yes. Chair Dickerson, I'm not sure if the applicant is on Zoom or here in the room. I don't think we have any re requests to speak on this item. So if you are the applicant, oh, I see a hand raised. Well, it, there was one raised. If you're the applicant and you'd like to speak on um, the seaside item, please go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. Okay, I see a hand raised, so you should be able to speak now. If you could give your name and address for the record, please. And, yeah. Hello? Yes. Hi, this is Suzanne Winslow. I'm with Omni Design Group. Uh, we're the architect for the project. And so we are here if you have any questions. Uh, I think Cody did a really good job describing the project. 
Um, so we're here if you have any questions. So you have nothing that you care to add to, um, to the particular um, presentation by staff? Um, I think he covered it very well. Okay. Uh, it, just in summary, uh, what prior uh, concerns I think that maybe were raised at the uh, study session had to do with potential uh, congestion or traffic or idling on La Brea. And um, so we've uh, clarified that that wasn't going to happen. And um, the landscape there is adequate to provide a, uh, a screening for the, you know, anybody who's driving by or uh, the neighbors across the street. So uh, we feel that it's designed well for that area and that it shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any kind of uh, detrimental impact because of this. We, in fact, we think it should, it would be, um, an advantageous project for that manufacturing um, zone site. So that's really all I have to add. All right, great. Thank you very much. Question for the applicant? Commissioner? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I have a question for the applicant. Do, do all the trucks pull up parallel to the building and not back in, or is it, or is it just um, they, they park and they get unloaded by uh, forklifts? Yes. There you go. Um, the vehicles just pull in. The gates are open um, by uh, the employees first thing in the morning, so they're just open. The trucks just pull in on, uh, this would be Plan West with the arrows. They just pull right in, and then they, uh, they circle to the back, and then they... Let me see. I'm not sure that they unload their, their boxes, which are then uh, put into the warehouse, and then the, the farmers come in uh, a couple of times a day to pick up their boxes. So your question had to do with are they parking there? Was that what you were asking? There are no loading docks, right? The, the trucks pull alongside the building as opposed to pulling forward and backing up to a loading dock? Exactly. There are no uh, loading docks. They have um, electric forklifts. That was one of the conditions that was um, required for this project. They're, they're electric, they're quiet, and they just uh, unload the pallets and then they um, just bring them into the warehouse. Okay, that, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Blanco, did you have a question? No? No. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Seifert. <clears throat> What's our height limitation? Was it? 30, they said it's 37 feet. I, I always remember 35 feet. Are we okay on height? Uh, yeah, the height limitation is 40 feet, so it's Perfect. it's underneath. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Seifert. And, and then one question I had just uh, regarded uh, La Brea. So it's it's your assertion that you are not going to have enough traffic uh, that is not going to be able to be parked on on site. That you're going to have any spillover onto La Brea. Is that correct? Um, the, oh, can you hear me? Yep. There is plenty of parking on site. There's no spillover, no effect on parking on the Brea Avenue. Okay. Okay. Do you do you envision um, uh, do you envision uh, trucks stacking up pre seven a.m. Uh, to wait for uh, on to, on La Brea uh, while um, um, while you're waiting for, while they're waiting for the seven a.m. gates to be open. No, we don't anticipate any stacking of any trucks at all because the first thing that's going to happen when the employees get there at 7 is to open up the gates. Okay. So the trucks will just be able to pull right in. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, any written communication? Thanks. Chair Dickerson and Commissioners, we did receive uh, one letter, and um, that letter was provided. And it's very similar in nature to the letter that was submitted in uh, one of the written comments we received on the environmental review. 
um, from Mitchell Sy, um, an attorney. And uh, that's the only uh, letter that we received, though, uh, prior to this hearing today. Okay. And is there any uh, anybody wanting to do public comment in uh, the sphere of Zoom? Yes, I do see a hand raised. Oh, I have two now. Oh, I have a few more. So it looks like we have three public comments. Okay. Commenters, and so I'll go ahead and um, unmute. Um, and for each of you, you'll, please give your name and address when you um, when you come on, and you'll have three minutes. Okay. So the first one is uh, Anthony Ventura. So, Mr. Ventura, go ahead. Mr. Ventura. Okay, might be having some technical issues. So let's move on to Manly McNinch. Hi, right, good evening. Thank you. My name is Manly McNinch. I live at uh, 4587 South Bradley Road, Santa Maria. Um, I feel that I'm going to be impacted environmentally uh, by this project. Um, I think it's, I don't think the sequel has been done properly on it to consider all the pollution coming in from the additional trucks. And I think it needs to be reviewed. Um, and it's pro projects like this typically are gonna be built using labor that's making wages that people were making back in 1995. I was working non-union as framing houses, you know, it's making the kind of wages these guys are make, being paid to do this type of work. So it's time we start getting people on skilled and trained and, you know, workers out on these projects. The city need, if the city would start requiring these projects being built under a skilled and trained workforce, it would start raising the income of the local residents up to a higher level where they can start affording to buy houses and cars in this area. Um, I greatly like to see the city start imposing skill and training requirements on any project like this going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our next speaker is. There is project time. Office. Where hmm. Okay, our next speaker is Jonathan Duran. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, good evening, planning commissioners. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Duran. I am a uh, member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. I do not live in Santa Maria, but I do have family and friends that reside within that area where this project is going to be proposed. From on my end, I believe that this project should use uh, have some element of skilled and trained workforce in this project um, and uh, with the city itself. Uh, we are building a brand new state-of-the-art training facility in Santa Maria. And with this, these skilled and trained workers that will be building these beautiful structures throughout Santa Barbara County, San Luis Obispo County. And for this, it's, that's one thing I want to touch on is just make sure that have opportunities for the next generation of carpenters and tradesmen that are going to be coming into the industry to have an opportunity to work close to home and be able to work on some of these projects like this one. So please consider a local skilled and trained workforce requirement to boost our economy and development. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, how okay. about the how about the first person? Have they been able to work out their technical issues? Uh, well, we have two other, we have two hands raised. Let's go back to Anthony Ventura. Okay. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. My name is Anthony Ventura. My address is seven hundred five Rainer Way, Santa Maria. I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. I live in the local area. <clears throat> I believe that I will be impacted by the environmental impacts of the project. <clears throat> I believe the city should require the project to be built utilizing a local and skilled and trained workforce like other cities have. Not, and they have not hesitated to apply skilled and trained work, workforces to do private work uh, <clears throat> in, their, in their cities and, and surrounding areas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and our last speaker is Pedro Toscano. Good, uh, good evening, uh, Planning Commissioners. Can you hear me? Yep. My name is Pedro Toscano. 
Uh, I'm also a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Uh, I don't reside in Santa Maria, but I do have family and friends that reside there. And on my visits, when I visit the family members, I, I, I encourage all my cousins and friends and relatives to join the trade of the carpenters. Uh, it, it was said uh, by another speaker that we are building a state-of-the-art training facility. Yes, we are, and that's what I encourage every young youth uh, now to pick up and, and uh, on a uh, on 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 a career path that would take them out of uh, and uh, out of the 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 the, yeah. the neighborhoods that they live in. Encourage them to buy a home and 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 you know pay for schooling and, and on their own. Um, I I also believe that I will be impacted by the environmental impacts of this project, and I would like to add that local and train. Uh, sir, sir, how, how would how would that be? You don't live in the area, so can you please um, can you please isolate how you would be affected by the by, by the environmental issues since you don't live here? Well, what what yes, would those I be mean, specifically? Uh, like, like, like I mentioned before, I do encourage family members and friends to join uh, the trade. Right, that we're building a, a training facility. Now, how would it affect me? Is that there's a lot of developments that are being uh, uh, built in the area, and we have people from Bakersfield driving from Bakersfield or driving from Fresno to Santa Maria to build these developments. How is that fair to the community? How is no, that no, fair but but, but how does but how does that but how does that affect you as far as the environment goes? Because th that was your claim. Well, yes, it does. It, it does impact me because these people that are driving from these far distances. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, just working in these areas, uh, they they are uh, driving a lot of auto automobile miles just to get to uh, to Santa Maria to okay. build, right. and that that takes away from building you know uh, uh, the youth into these uh, jobs that are in the in the community. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that answered your question, sir. Yep. Okay. Thanks a lot. Any, anybody else, Dana? Those are all the speakers. Okay. Thank you. Um, then uh, we will go ahead and bring it back to, uh, we'll close the, uh, the public comment period, and we will bring it back to discussion by the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to make? Mr. Thank Lopez. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to ask if the if the uh, applicant had any uh, rebuttal to the um, items brought up during the public comment. Dana, do you have to bring bring them up? Oh, okay. Suzanne, you should be able to speak now. Yep. Now, this is kind of confusing for me. Anyway, oh, I just want to say that I think that they are going to try to um, hire local. It's really going to be up to the contractor, but in general, that would be the idea. Not that it's a requirement that you're that you're suggesting, but that is what the owner is uh, envisioning. I can't, you know, guarantee anything, but to have local people, there would be a whole lot of reason for them to come from Bakersfield or Fresno. But anyway, that one, that's kind of the idea that they would be local anyway. So I uh, just wanted to make that clear that that is, we have lots of local contractors and um, they'll probably go with a local contractor, so. That would make sense if they'd have local uh, carpenters and stuff. And that, that's really all I want to add. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Further questions? Commissioner Blanco, no? No. Thank you. Commissioner Seifert. Would this be time for comments, too? 
Sure, absolutely. Um, we saw this project on the um, study session, and I think we asked a lot of questions, and I think that the applicant uh, did a very good job of addressing those questions as far as La Brea. That was my biggest problem. Um, I think it's a good project. Uh, I think it's located in the right place, and I don't see uh, a problem uh, supporting it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Seifert. Any other comments? Okay, if there are no comments, then um, I will hear motions for resolutions and a motion. Commissioner Seifert, you want to? Or? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, by resolution, adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigated monitoring report. Okay. We're going to need a roll call. Oh, I think we need a second first. I'll second that motion. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Chair Dickerson? Uh, I also agree with Commissioner Seifert, aye. Uh, by motion, approve conditional use permit U2021-0002. Make a second for that, too. Okay. All <coughs> those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it, and good luck with your project. Okay, moving on to the final item, number four, human being coffee plan development permit and conditional use permit at 1935 South Broadway. Can we hear from staff? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair Dickerson. Um, my name is Cody Grabo. I'm associate planner and I will be presenting the human being project to establish a coffee kiosk and drive through at 1935 South Broadway. This project is along the Broadway Commercial Corridor and it's just north of the intersection of Carmen Lane and South Broadway. And it's between Inger Drive and Carmen Lane to the north and south and South Thornburg Street and South Broadway to the west and to the east. And the area has been developed with a mix of commercial and residential development. To the north of the project site is a vacant lot and a drive through restaurant. To the south of the site is a car wash and a multi-tenant commercial development. And to the west of the site is apartments and to the east is car sales. So the zoning at the site is PDC2 or Plan Development General Commercial. And the project is within the Entrada specific plan and is surrounded by a mix of commercial and high density residential zoning. The site is 0.49 acres and it contains an existing vacant commercial building that's formerly been used as a sign shop. And this building would be demolished and removed as part of this project. Access into the site primarily is from South Broadway and there also is alley access at the rear of the site. So this is a perspective um, facing Southwest from the entrance on South Broadway of the project site and the existing building to be demolished and removed. And this is looking down the adjacent alleyway um, if you're facing north. So the project includes a 675 square foot coffee kiosk with a walk-up service counter and eight parking spaces at the middle of the site. Um, seven parking spaces are required, so it does meet the code for the parking. And a drive through lane is proposed that would accommodate 14 stacked vehicles. And the drive through lane does meet the queuing requirements. Um, staff reviewed a prior study that observed six different coffee shops on the Central Coast during peak business hours. And um, we found at um, the peak that this project could accommodate um, the number of vehicles that was observed. And the traffic pattern on site would be um, in a counterclockwise manner. So um, vehicles would enter from South Broadway. They'd head to the back of the site before um, looping back and then ordering at the speaker menu, board location, and then exiting back onto South Broadway. And the alleyway would not be utilized um, for circulation. Bollards are proposed to block it off. So it would be for emergency access only. Um, there is a loading zone proposed in the back of the alley, as well as um, the trash enclosures for trash service. And um, planning, engineering, and the fire department have all reviewed this concept and approve of the site design. 
So the kiosk itself is a rectangular building. It's relatively small. It's 675 square feet, and it includes a kitchen and storage area. And there's no public seating provided in the kiosk or adjacent to the building. And staff has required a public restroom that's accessible from the exterior of the building. So the building would be 19 feet tall, and it would um, be compatible with the commercial development along the South Broadway corridor. And it would also comply with the exterior building requirements of the Entrada specific plan. Um, the building materials would be consistent on all elevations, and it includes stucco siding, stone veneer wainscoting, and metal awnings. And the paint scheme is earth tones with a mix of brown and beige accents. So landscaping is proposed throughout the site, and it's a mix of drought tolerant shrubs and ground cover, as well as 23 trees, and four different species are proposed. So um, the two smaller symbols on the left here represent the paperback tree and the strawberry tree, and then the two larger symbols um, represent the coast live oak and the sawleaf cell cova that's shown on the screen. So 15% of the site has to be landscaped according to our code and 24% is proposed. So the landscaping does comply with the municipal code. And in conclusion, staff recommends the planning commission by motion conditionally approve plan development permit PD 2021-0003 and conditional use permit U 2021-0011. So the applicant and staff are now available for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cody. I'll start off with uh, disclosure by any commissioners on ex parte communication. No, none from me either. Uh, any questions for staff at this time? Commissioner Seifert. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Cody, what's our accessibility on this uh, project? Uh, I know going south, uh, it's absolutely no problem. Uh, when you're going north, are we going to have patrons trying to cross traffic? If, are we? Do we have? The ability to do that. What, what's it looking like on Broadway there? What's what's what are we anticipating? So I believe it's limited to right, right in, right out only. The current configuration for vehicles. Can they cross Broadway to? Can they turn left on Broadway to get in? No, they cannot. Okay, so they must be traveling south. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, one other question. Sorry. Um, at one time, we approved a dentistry building on the property uh, to the north. Uh, nothing ever happened with that. Is that permit still in effect? Is that is, or do we know anything about that property? Or I mean, it's not that relevant, but I just wondered, is it going to be developed? Or um, staff's going to look into that. Um, just one second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further questions of staff? Commissioner Lopez. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I I I see a, a 34 foot back out to the far furthest north curb of the drive aisle is how is the 25 foot required back out counted within that say say you do get queuing that swings all the way around and it starts heading towards Broadway is is there still enough maneuvering room there to uh, back out of the parking lot and and get into the exit aisle or into the aisle to get to Broadway um, Commissioner Lopez so just so I understand um, it's looking like for the vehicles that would be parked on site, there's this 34 foot distance, correct? Right. Okay. Um, so it appears there's 10 feet um, from the back of the stall to the, the pavers. And then I don't know the additional distance from the pavers um, to the, the stacked vehicles at this time. Cody, it appears it'd be uh, 22 feet from the back of the stall, if it's 34 minus the 12. Uh, I'm just saying from the northern uh, curb face to the back of the marked stall, it is shown as 34 feet. Um, standard lane width would be 12 feet, you would assume, it would be, so it'd be 22 feet. Yeah, it looks like if you if you split the distance of this 24 foot dimension 
and then you include the 10 feet, you would be at 22 feet. Okay. Is, is it still 25 feet though, or is it 22? So, uh, Commissioner Lopez, uh, members of the commission, I believe you are referring to a requirement that for residential uh, properties with a garage that there be a 24 foot distance of uh, maneuvering space behind the garage door. Uh, typically those are, are spaces that have rectangular driveway approaches and don't allow any turning movement. Uh, and that's the reason for that 24 foot is to uh, uh, be able to take off from a position vertical to the garage and back up and that would be the turning movement. So in this case, there is the, the turning movement is incorporated into the parking lot design. So less than 24 foot would be provided or, or needed in this instance. Um, also, that is a standard that is applied to single family and multifamily residential parcels when talking about a garage or a distance uh, adjacent to an alleyway. So from the opposite side of the alley. Uh, in cases where we have 90 degree parking in parking fields for commercial sites, um, the two way drive aisle, the full drive aisle is 24 feet. And in this case, we don't expect cars to be stacking out beyond uh, the last car shown in the driveway approach, uh, drive through approach. Therefore, they would have that full 34 foot width of backing space. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that, just one last question. This might, I've never seen it happen. If you break down in the drive aisle, how do you get out of there? <laughs> I, I always wonder that. I, I, I think that back. will be a uh, something that the property owner and operator will have to deal with. Uh, this business is almost exclusively drive-through. Uh, that may be something the applicant is prepared to discuss too, it being uh, having done many of these facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Zeppelins come over, Tom, and then they lift them up and take them away. Commissioner Blanco, do you have a question? Yeah, I do have uh, one, maybe one question on the uh, the loading zone. Is that intended for deliveries to the site, basically? Is that what that's for? Uh, yes, that's correct, Commissioner Blanco. There'd be occasional deliveries that would occur. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, can we hear from the applicant? You're up, Larry. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. It's good to be back. Um, I'm Larry Apple from Integrity Planning, and I represent the Human Being Team. We're pleased to be before your commission this evening. And uh, before I get started, I'd like to introduce the team members. First, Pat Mitchell, who's developer and owner of Moss Lane Ventures. He'll be speaking this evening. And Eric Alvarez, our project ar architect. I want to thank Cody and Dana for moving this project through the system. I know we've had a lot of ups and downs with the different code, uh, the uh, COVID scares and just changes in procedures and things. And so it's nice to be coming out the other end of the process. Um, and it hasn't been a year, so it, it's, uh, it's, it's a good feeling. Um, for the record, we're in support of the draft conditions proposed by the city. and. Um, so at this time, I'd just like Pat to come up and speak, and then any of the team members will be available if you have questions. Maybe you can explain how we get those stalled cars out. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Sir, if you can give your name and address for the um, record, please. Uh, Pat Mitchell, 1005 Moss Lane, Templeton, California. Thank you. <clears throat> I represent uh, Moss Lane Ventures, as Larry said which is a franchisee of the human being. A little history on the human being. Uh, it started in 1998 by two uh, high school buddies in uh, Ashland, Oregon. And so for the next 10 or 12 years, they built a series of drive-up coffee shops in the Medford, Ashland area. 
And then about 10 years ago, they decided that they uh, really needed to franchise this because it was very successful in that area. And so they set up a franchise agreement and uh, started franchising. Today, there's about 134 the human beings in the United States, and they're in probably 18 or 20 states. Uh, we currently, as a franchise, E have three operating the human beings, one in Atascadero, one in Morro Bay, and one in Templeton. We're getting ready to open one in Clovis, California, here in about four or five weeks. We also have plans for one in uh, Fresno, and we have a site in Lompoc we're working on, along with uh, the one that we're, we're planning on doing here in uh, Santa Maria. Um, we really look forward to being part of this community. Uh, we have very friendly uh, wait staff. We pride ourselves on that, and we pride ourselves on our diversity. We uh, serve over 300 different types of beverages, along with uh, different snacks. So it's all the way from coffee drinks to uh, a whole line of smoothies. That's about it. Uh, if there's any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Questions for the applicant at this time? No? Commissioner Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Bishop. Are there any contingency plans if the, the, bill, uh, the business grows and grows? Because I, you know, just, I was listening to the radio this morning. They were talking about the Chick-fil-A in Santa Barbara and how it's outgrown its, its location. This, you're maxed out. What, what would be the contingency plans if this gets maxed out? Well, all I can tell you is from our experience at our other human beings, uh, normally the maximum amount of uh, cars that we have backed up are four or five. So, you know, we feel like we're well within a safety zone there with having 14 positions. Okay. And, and, and also, I, I just kind of think about Dutch Brothers up on the north side of town. When that opened, it spilled out onto Broadway, swung around Grant Street. And still all, does. Right. And I, I know there's two ways of getting in there, both northbound and southbound. Here it's just southbound. You can just get in on southbound. Mm -hmm. And then there's only the right turn, right in, right out. So it's a little different, but I, I was just worried about. Yeah, we you. have a we have a little different uh, business setup than, uh, than uh, Dutch Bros does. Dutch Bros actually started in the next town in Oregon from the human being about the same time. Oh, and, which is kind of interesting, uh, but uh, they we pride ourselves on getting people in and out, so we actually time ourselves. And if you look at the turnaround time on our uh, transactions, they're usually around about three to four minutes. When you go into a Dutch Bros, it's kind of a social event. They go in there, you know, and they're kind of BSing with the customers, you know. And there's these real long wait times because people. It's kind of a young people experience thing. We, uh, we uh, actually have a more mature crowd that comes into our coffee shops. And so, you know, the whole idea is, you know, we don't want those big lines like Dutch Bros does or some of the Starbucks. You know, we get them in and get them out. You know, and that's why our customers like us also. They don't want to spend, you know, a half an hour sitting in line. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Blanco, anything? No. I, I have a quick question, and maybe maybe staff. Maybe I don't know if this is for you or for staff, but uh, um, I know like uh, Santa Maria Burger, they utilize they utilize the uh, that alley um, for you know for access to coming in. I, and I've never seen any of the the weights spill over into the alley, but I do know that people come and go from the alley. Um, so I'm kind of curious why you didn't, um, or why it wasn't allowed to uh, to utilize the alley to, you know, I, I think, to come uh, and go Eric as well. I think Eric could probably uh, address that better than I could. But I think we were trying to uh, get a flow, you know, a uniform flow through there, you know. I'm, I, it's not out of the question that we couldn't come in from that direction, but we felt we really wanted a loading zone back there so that the trucks didn't impact the traffic within the pattern. 
And, and I think maybe it's uh, not necessarily something you need to worry about now, but um, addressing uh, Commissioner uh, Lopez's uh, yeah. comments, you know, if uh, you find that you, you're, you're growing considerably and you start sure. to have people spilling out onto Broadway, I suppose you could open up. Yeah, uh, you nice. could open up that back alley so you can, you know, have additional uh, access that Yeah, way. I mean, that's a very good comment. I like yeah. that. Anyway. Anything else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Is this drive up only or there's walk up also? There's a walk up window also. Okay, and then, uh, that's why it's, we have the, the uh, ADA requirement so that, the, so that somebody could, if they need to pull in, they can get there with their wheelchair and they have all the yes. uh, heights and everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anything further? Yep. Well, I, sure I was just going to add to what you asked, um, <laughs> Chair, was just the access to the alley with the other businesses having it. Um, I was just wondering if it was um, a requirement or if there's any reason from a safety standpoint or maybe Public Works can chime in on background there. But I, I think it's a good idea to have that flexibility maybe in the future to open it up if, if it made sense. Yeah, Chair Dickerson, Commissioner Blanco, uh, Vice the Commission, uh, Senior Civil Engineer Mueller uh, with the Public Works Department. Uh, the access was requested to be denied by the Public Works Department uh, to avoid conflicts, to avoid the um, delays between people coming from the from the alley, people coming from the Broadway, creating confusion. Who's 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 next on base? Um, it just creates a more uniform flow of where people are expected to go, enter the site and exit the site. Um, additionally. You have the alley access on Carmen to the south, and I believe, um, I don't remember the northern street, um, but avoid, you know, keeping traffic moving on Broadway rather than directing them to the side streets. Yeah, thanks. I could, I could see that being a little bit of an issue, too. If somebody wanted to come down the alley to try to get in line here, then you got cars coming the other way. It uh, also would cause an issue, so that makes sense. Thank you, you. You would also have the issue of people that are leaving the site if they're trying to leave through the alley. They're also competing with the people in line, um, yeah. so we want to avoid that conflict as well. I see that at the high school all the time. I know how that goes. <laughs> And I, and I see that also at that uh, Santa Maria Burger. So, I mean, I, I, I recognize that, that that thing of, you know, who's going to get, who's going to queue in line, who's next, that sort of thing. But, um, but you guys would be open to it. Um, let's say if we ended up in a situation where they're fabulously successful and they're starting to have some issues with Broadway, you'd be open to, to opening that up at that time? I, absolutely. Uh, okay. Just like with uh, Grays and Canes, there was some new novelty uh, issues were with the queue, you may have noticed. If you, if you weren't, then good to know, but yeah, they, I mean, uh, they're very widely popular. One idea is that you could have a one-way entrance from the alley, and it could merge along that one curb right there. Yeah. So, you know, I could see where that could work. But as I said, I don't think that's something that's necessary now. Right. Something to think about down the road if we if we end up with any issues. But um, anyway, um, any other questions for the applicants at this time? Okay, seeing none, then let's go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Larry. Um, let's go ahead and open it up to the public. Um, do we have any written communication? No, we have no uh, additional speaker slips. Let me check Zoom. One moment here. And no, we have uh, no public comment in Zoom. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, then we'll close public comment and we'll bring it back to the, um, to the commission for any comments or motions, that sort of thing. Commissioner Sieper. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just driving by this the other day and I wondered, I knew the owner of the other business and mm -hmm. the, uh, the building looked so sad just sitting there abandoned. So uh, it was next day signs, I believe. Yep. So I'm really happy to see that somebody's coming in with a brand new project. I thought that the building would just be uh, renovated or someone would move in and to see a brand new project, uh, all sparkling, shiny and clean. Uh, uh, I think that the, uh, the traffic is always an issue wherever we look. Uh, uh, we always talk about the, the, the stacking and the in and out, but uh, if we do only have the southbound traffic, uh, and uh, from, their, from their history, it sounds like the stacking shouldn't be an issue. And it does sound like we have cooperation with the utilities if there is a, uh, additional uh, uh, entrance required in the back there. Uh, I agree with, with Cody on that one myself. Uh, that, that alley is a, is a problem, and that was actually something I was concerned with if that was going to be used. 
Uh, it's very close to the car wash, and that gets really congested right there, trying to get in and out uh, on that uh, Carmen Lane. So uh, um, I'm not crazy about the colors, but I'm guessing that they look like a coffee bean. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, okay. Uh, that's, so, I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. <clears throat> Other than that, <clears throat> I, I can see myself supporting this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Seifer. <clears throat> Commissioner Blanco? Yeah, I, um, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Seifert um, in that, you know, it's, it, it'll be nice to see a, uh, a new product there, something new happening. Um, some of these older buildings that have been sitting empty or just unused is, um, you know, doesn't help the community. Um, and I think this, this will, um, you know, I, I think the challenges that uh, a lot of communities, including ours, have had with um, drive throughs you know, are pretty evident. Um, but a lot of it sometimes is just the newness of things. Um, I, I really, um, really do hope that this doesn't have the same issues. I don't think they want to have it either. So um, um, I, I think the circulation plan is, is, makes a lot of sense, um, and, and the product looks looks good. And like I said, it'd be nice to have uh, something new in the community uh, on that end of town. Looks like maybe there's not enough coffee, um, so we need to spread it out. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, I can uh, I can support the support the project. It looks like a good project to me. Thank you very much. Commissioner Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I had some initial concerns with the interior uh, internal circulation. I do realize that it's right in, right out. You can't really get to it going northbound on South Broadway unless you go Carmen Lane and somehow go through the alley and come back around. But but I think, I think they've answered those internal uh, uh, circulation questions well. And I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't take a long time. My wife loves drive throughs because she has two kids and she said she'd wait a half an hour just to get a cup of coffee. So, oh my God. Yeah, so, and it does look like a great project, so uh, I think I could support it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lopez. Um, I also uh, can support this uh, project. Um, I, I uh, like Commissioner Seifert. Uh, I knew the owners of the, uh, of the sign company and it was sad to see them uh, 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 fold, I guess, and uh, it was even sadder to see the decay on the on the building and homeless and all the other stuff that was going on with that. So um, I'm really very, very pleased that a company like yours is coming along and scraping the thing and putting something new up. Um, one hopes that the um, dentist office or somebody like them will also, um, you know, infill onto that lot as well, so then we can have some continuity for that whole block. But uh, as it stands right now, you're certainly doing your part, and we appreciate it. Um, I am looking for uh, motions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would move that we uh, conditionally, by motion, conditionally approve plan development permit PD 2021-0003 and U 2021-0011. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What? Aye. Oh, in a second. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We need a second. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks, Larry. I, I want to see the 300 beverages. Yeah, three three minutes. I get in that line and I'm out in three minutes. <laughs> Oh, in front of the line, damn it. Three minutes for every car. Oh, of course. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's, a, you know, that's a lot of supplies. Yeah, I guess so. They only have four ingredients, 300 things on the line. Yeah. Okay, oral reports from planning commissioners and staff. Why don't we start off with oral reports from staff? Great, thank you. This is Dana Eady, planning manager. Um, so our upcoming meetings, we have a study session tomorrow. Um, also, welcome back to the room. It's good to see everyone here in the chambers again. Um, thank you all for all of your work while we were on Zoom. I know that was as, you know, trying at times, but I appreciate all the coordination that we as staff had with you, and um, I think that was overall pretty successful. So, anyway, we're back in the room, so that's great. Uh, tomorrow, we're meeting in our regular conference room um, at the Community Development Department, the Moon Room, as we call it, and we'll have two items on the study session agenda tomorrow, and that meeting's at 1.30. And then our next public hearing is going to be on April 6th, 
um, here in the chambers. And then we also have a study session scheduled on April 7th. So we've continued to stay fairly busy uh, moving projects along. I also wanted to mention that on April 5th, um, we're going to be presenting our housing element update presentation to the city council. That's the similar presentation that we gave to your um, commission a few weeks ago. So that'll go to the city council for a briefing. We also have a survey, a housing survey that's out right now um, on our website. So I just wanted to mention that in case any of you would like to check it out. Um, and Frank Albro, our principal planner, is here and he I think has an answer to Commissioner Seifert's question about the um, dentist office that he's ready to provide. So I'll turn it over to Frank. What'd you find out, Frank? Thank you, uh, Chair, members of the Commission. Um, the permit that was referred to was for Smile Santa Maria Dental. It was PD 2018-16, and it was approved in uh, September of 2018. Uh, staff received building permits, uh, applications, and those applications were approved by the city in June of 2019. Okay. But that was the last activity that we saw from that applicant. Um, we've recently had a zoning uh, confirmation or uh, a zoning uh, uh, research application. That was late last year and not to spread rumors or, or be too hypothetical, but typically when we see one of those, that means the property may be up for sale. Thank you. Thank you very much for looking that up, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. So that is uh, the staff update, but we are here to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Any um, Anything oral reports from planning commissioners? Commissioner yes. Seifert? Thank you, Chair. I do. Um, Heather, there's a um, there's a new, there's a new business. I, I think it's a it might not be new, but uh, it's right next door to Del Taco, and they've decided that they need to let everybody know that they're open, <laughs> and they've they've hung a very large sign <laughs> on the building. Already dealt with it with Frank. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so so we're all aware. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Actually, I, I could if you don't mind, I can uh, just interject that we did contact uh, code enforcement. Code enforcement has contacted the property owner and the tenant, and uh, they are under a timeline to correct the violation. I'm sure they just want everybody. They, they, it's been sure. such a weird operation there. It was like a catering. It was a restaurant, and so one time it used to be a coffee. Nobody knows, so I can see why <laughs> they want to have an open sign. But it's been up there for a while, so I think we all know. So that would be great. Thank you. Um, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, funny that you should mention the Raising Canes uh, uh, because um, I've been hearing a few things about the parking lot too. So uh, I, I, when I look at that parking lot, I see all the construction, I see all of the workers. Are we going to have another Costco situation there uh, where we're going to be complaints all the time or, or is this going to settle down as Raising Canes is now open and people are, are, are getting used to it and as, a, as the buildings are done, we will have more parking I'm hoping right yes Commissioner Seaver that'd be that's my understanding my understanding is that the queues have dropped considerably um, there were concerns especially with all these I don't know if you guys went on the soft opening um, they snaked throughout the entire parking lot all the way around all these and spilled even using the entire parking lot in the whatever available space and went back out onto college um, my understanding is completely contained within their own queues now so I wasn't there, but I, I have heard about it. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. Good. Uh, you know, and that's what I usually, in Santa Maria, when a new place opens, everyone has to go there. So, okay, thank you. Hopefully that's that's going to go away. And what? <laughs> and what? That's, it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> Came from this direction. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know, but it does happen it does here. Happen. I mean, it really happens here. We get a new place. And I, it's I, love, I, I love for a town of our size, how small town it can be sometimes, you know, 120, 130,000 people. And, and we all like, have to go there. Oh my God, look, yeah. a new coffee place. I, <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's gonna have a, we're all, we're all gonna be there yeah. uh, for at least a week. So, uh, but, then, but then it settles down. 
And then, uh, Dana, you did remind me that uh, I'd just like to hand it to all of you uh, that through the Zoom and everything that we've had to do. You've done a great job, Kathleen and Robert and uh, Frank. Everybody, Dana, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, you know, we read stories about all this stuff, but hopefully we're through the worst of it now. And I just really appreciate a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I have one comment I'd like to make, and it'll be just a, a brief one, and that is that um, uh, recently we lost a member of the, uh, of the uh, developing community, Dan Blau. Um, he was a good man. Um, I didn't always agree with what he said. He and I sometimes were a little cantankerous with one another, but I always respected him. He was a good, he was a good guy, and he put a lot of good projects together. So anyway, uh, he's in my memories, and I'm sure he's in everybody else's as well. So there we go. Thank you very much, Robert. Absolutely. And with that, anything else? No? Adjourned. <laughs> 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 <laughs>